Okay, so I've been asked to do a guide on how to install RetroArch on Xbox Series S or Xbox Series S. This should also work for Xbox One as well, same sort of mode. Uh, so I've got nothing installed at the moment. Uh, this is just my Xbox as normal, so everything's stock. Uh, so if I go into the store, and I do a search for dev, Oh, there you go, it's already come up. So as soon as you put dev in, we've got dev mode activation. Now I've already bought this. Uh, it was 14 pound 40, I think it was. Uh, so click on it and click install. But it is just a normal app from the Microsoft Store. And we can view that in the queue if we wanna see how it's getting on. Unfortunately, my Microsoft Store has decided to do an update at the same time. Okay, so now it's installing, so 10.9 megabytes 10.09 megabytes are so very very tiny uh, so let's press a button and open that up now if you get this stage uh, it is a it is a bit of a weird one uh, and I got stuck on this now you might before you get to this you might get an activation and you might have to go to a website you just have to follow everything on screen I can't replicate that again because I've already done it but I have the instructions here to get past this so if we go Press the home button and go to settings. Go to system, console info, and press left button, right button, left trigger, right trigger. And you can see now we've got this option, developer settings. Click on that and enable developer mode by ticking that and hit continue. Okay, so you can see that everything looks very different. Uh, I've got uh, test accounts top right. If you haven't got anything in test accounts, you need to add an existing one. So go right, hit add existing, and then log in with your email and your password. And this is what you would have created on the original startup bit. And mine is just my Xbox details. So mine's already logged in because it does it on its own because it, I've, as I say, I can't go back enough to show everything as is. But the key bit here, uh, if you if you want to leave dev mode, you can click on leave dev mode, and uh, you can see here there's a tick where delete side loaded games and apps. So if you've installed anything and you want to get rid of them, you can just leave that ticked uh, and press OK, and it will reboot and you'll be back into a normal Xbox interface. Uh, but if you uncheck it, then anything you've installed on dev mode will stay in dev mode. So I'm going to hit cancel because obviously I haven't installed anything yet. Under games and apps, you can see there's nothing there at all. So the next step I need to do now is to go on to pretty much any web browser and see this box bottom right. Uh, that is the IP address of my Xbox. So anything on that local network, so anything else getting either with Wi-Fi or Ethernet going through my router, if I type that address into the uh, URL bar at the top, then I can access the Xbox and upload things to it. So let's get onto a different computer. Okay, so I'm on my MacBook now. I can use any web browser I want. Uh, I could use a Windows computer. I could use an iPhone, an Android phone, anything with a web browser to do this process. And we'll type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.1.1 slash 192 one one four four three uh, now obviously you're putting in the address that shows up on your Xbox not the address that I've just been typing in so when you hit return it tells me it's not private well I'm okay with that because it is on my local network let's hit advanced and proceed then we've got to put in our username and our password which we created when we set up the dev app. Now again, I can't go back on that because I've already set up the dev app, but uh, you create a username and a password. And I did a nice short one. So this is the Xbox device portal. So basically, uh, this is uh, allowing me to send things to the Xbox over my local network. Now I haven't got anything to be able to send over there because I haven't downloaded anything. So let's open another tab and uh, let's go to RetroArch and download. So RetroArch is a multi-game emulator 
Uh, and this works on loads of different things, but you need to download the right version. So you can see as I scroll down, and unfortunately this will be quite jerky because I'm using my screen capture device on my Xbox, uh, and this is my 10 year old Mac. Uh, so Xbox One, there you go. So click on download. And it doesn't matter when you down, where you download it to, I'm gonna download this to the desktop. So we can have a look at the desktop now, and we can see that it's downloading. I'll put links in the description to uh, Microsoft setup of dev mode uh, because there's like an official way, uh, but also Xbox HQ, which has got loads of great links for downloading extra things to add to the Xbox. So extra things you can kind of sideload into the Xbox. Okay, so that's downloaded now. I don't think I need to unzip this one. I'm pretty sure it's ready as is. So let's go back to the browser, uh, go back to this tab that had the Xbox connection on it and hit add. Hit choose file, click on the retro apps that you just downloaded, and open, and hit next, and hit start, and so that's now uploading to the Xbox. Okay, so package successfully registered, uh, so you can see on the Xbox screen now that it says under games and apps we've got RetroArch and it says not running. So that's great, but RetroArch doesn't come with any games. Now I can't tell you how to download games, um, but uh, you can find other guides on the internet for that. Um, but uh, I've already got some games on a USB stick, so I can close down that Xbox device portal. But if I wanted to add more things onto it, then all I would do is hit add and do it in exactly the same way. So I've got a USB stick, uh, which I plugged into my Mac, and I've put three folders, N64, PSP, and SNES and I put a game in each one. And uh, I think all of them are unzipped, yeah, it looks like all of them are unzipped. Sometimes emulators run with a zipped version, sometimes they don't, you can just experiment with it. If it doesn't show up, unzip it. Uh, so I need to eject that and pop that into my Xbox. So I no longer need my Mac now, so I'm gonna shut that down. Okay, so I'm gonna pop my USB stick into my Xbox and I'm gonna click on Use for Media. So now I'm gonna go down to Games and Apps and RetroArch and click on that. Hit Sign In. Sign in to your Xbox account. And click on it again. Now it's a good idea always to use the online updater to uh, update everything. So if we go to online updater, update core info files, update assets, update controller profiles, update databases, update overlays, update slang shaders, just basically get everything as up to date as it can be. Okay, so after all those updates, you can see it looks a lot nicer now. So let's go back and back again. Okay, now let's go to load content and we'll go to start directory and open. Go down to the USB stick and pick say N64. Go down to select. You can see that shows up now. Click on that and you can see we're up and running and we're in the game. So let's just click into it. I haven't done anything to this, haven't set up anything or anything like that. I'm just going straight through just to get into the game just to show that it works all right and there's no other configuration that I've needed to do. Three, two, one, go! Not the best of starts. But you can see that it looks pretty decent. It's moving pretty fast. Oh, it's a bit tight. Nice start. Oh, I didn't, didn't end up in last place though. So now to quit out of this, if you press the Xbox button, uh, you can quit out of RetroArch. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but uh, I haven't seemed to find it and, it, and it varies on different emulators. So if I now press the button uh, just above the right stick, and then quit. So let's go back into RetroArch, and let's try the PSP one as well. Ah, so we have more options now. I don't know why you don't get this right at the start, uh, and it makes it confusing to use RetroArch. So now what I can do is uh, scan a directory. 
uh, and this is a much better way of doing it. So if I hit open, and if I go down to the USB, let's do the PSP one and select and scan this directory. So you see it's picked up GTA. Go back, do the same thing again, but this time I'll scan the SNES one. I'm not sure if this SNES game works. Um, select, scan. Yeah, it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to pick it up. I don't know if I've done something wrong there. Scan director. Well, let's try scan file and see if that see if that does it differently. Maybe it's just because it's a tiny file that it doesn't show up. So if we go back, uh, you can see now I've got PSP on there. Uh, I haven't got N64 yet, so I need to do that. So scan directory. And obviously if you have multiple games in here, they would all show up uh, because you've scanned that folder. So N64, select, scan directory. So in theory, yeah, so now we've got an N64. So there's obviously something wrong with my SNES ROM. Um, I did rename it. I wouldn't have thought that would have made a difference, um, but maybe it's corrupt or something. something's not quite right. So let's try a bit of GTA. Uh, let's hit run and uh, for some reason it doesn't associate with PSP, so we'll have to click on that and then run again. Could not read the content, so I'm gonna try it again. No. <laughs> I showed in my other video, God of War working on PSP. Um, so some ROMs may not work with it. Um, I don't know uh, why it's not compatible with this version of RetroArch, but you can download the standalone PPSS PP emulator. You can download the standalone N64 emulator, although I struggled with that one. There's a NES emulator. So you can see here, if I click on Load Core, there are loads of different systems on here. So you just need to find the games for those systems, put them in a folder, and then locate that folder. Once you scan that folder, they should show up in the system. Um, and uh, obviously some things will work, some things won't, but uh, it's just a case of playing around with it and trying to get it working. Generally with SNES and Mega Drive and Game Boy Advance and all the older systems, no worries at all. You do need BIOS files for things like PlayStation and, uh, and Dreamcast sometimes, things like that. But uh, I think it's probably easier to download the standalone emulators like I showed in my previous video. From this menu, uh, you're just adding games and apps by going to that URL at the bottom here, so the HTTPS with your web browser, you download it on your computer, and then you upload it to the Xbox, and then it will show up on this list here under games and apps. Anyway, I hope this all helped. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.